Today we're doing math page 101 and 102. Philippians 4.13 tells us, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. We're going to first start by looking at the yellow box at the top of the page. And it says, fact, a common factor is a factor that belongs to two or more numbers. And they show us some examples of that right here. Here's the numbers, 12 and 18 being used for the first part. For 12, the pairs of factors are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. And all of those are then put in a line right here in numerical order. <coughs> order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Then with 18, they've done the same thing. And they've showed the pairs of factors. 1 times 18, 2 times 9, and 3 times 6. And they've taken those numbers and they've wrote them in numerical order right there. 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. Then the common factors are being shown by circled in red. They both have 1, they both have 2, they both have 3, and they both have 6. And so those are the common factors. And if I were to ask you which one is the greatest common factor, you'd say 6 would be the greatest common factor. And that's known as the GCF. And the GCF for this problem would be 6. If you look down lower, what they did was they took three numbers, and they did the same thing here, 12, 18 and 24, they first came up with their pairs of factors. For 12, they have 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. And then they wrote them out in numerical order of 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Then with 18, they did their pairs of factors. 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6. And they wrote those out as well. 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. And then 24, this time they've used three numbers. 24, they've got 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 16, and they wrote all those out right here. Now between the three here, the ones we've done in purple, well, they all have 1, so that's a common factor. They all have 2, that's a common factor. They all have 3, that's a common factor. Now there's a 4 here and there's a 4 here, but it's not in the middle, so that is not a common factor. But 6 is. They all share 6. And so again, the GCF, which is the greatest common factor, would be 6. That's the same answer two times in a row there. Let's go ahead and look at number 1A. We've got to find the common factor. So we're looking at, and if, if they had a line here, it's divided here. We're just looking above that line right now. For 8, the pairs of factors is 1 times 8, and then also 2 times 4. For 12, the pairs of factors would be 1 times 12. It would also be, because it's even, you know, 2 goes into it, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. Now we're going to take the ones up there and put them here. We're going to take the ones here and we're going to put them there. So we have 1 right there, 2 from right there, 4 from right there, and 8 from right there. Then we look at our 12 area, and we have 1 that came from right there, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. 
Now it's asking down here, the common factors are, well, they both have 1, they both have 2, and they both have 4. Now we'll look at B, and in B they're using three numbers, 4, 6, and 8, just like they did up in the yellow box. 4, you have 1 times 4, you also would need 2 times 2. For 6, we have 1 times 6, also we'd need 2 times 3. And for 8, we'd also need 2 times 4. Those are the pairs of factors, now we're going to write the factors. First for 4, the factors are 1, 2, and there's a 2 here, so you don't need to write it twice, and 4. So 1, 2, and 4. Okay, number six, we've got one, two, three, and six. And so we need to write all four of those down. One, two, three, six. And for eight, we have one, two, four, and eight. And we'll write those four down. And now the common factors are one, they all have one, and they all have two. So we're simply writing 1 and 2. If I were to ask you, what is the GCF, or the greatest common factor? Well, what's greater, 1 or 2? It would be 2. Down below in number 2, it says write any two factors for each. Well, two factors for 24, first one that comes to my head, and you can use this if you want, would be 2 and 12. They both go into 24. There's other ones. You could put 4 and 6. I don't want you to put 1 in anything. That'd be too easy, like 1 and 15. Then you could just put 1 and 27. Don't do 1 in anything. Think of some other ones. 15, you could do 3 and 5. 27, I'll let you figure out the rest of those on your own. Go ahead and look at number 6 on the back side. Number 6 telling us to solve this measurement equation. Remember, if the answer is in months, then you need to change everything into months. 6 months is already done. And then the 3 years we're going to have to change into months. So we box the 3 years down to the months. We're going from years to months. Are we going larger to smaller or smaller to larger? Years are bigger than a month, so we're going larger to smaller. So we need to multiply. Number two, how many? What's your special number when it comes to months and years? How many months are in a year? It'd be 12. And so you need to do 3 times 12. When you do 3 times 12, you get 36. And now you're able to do 36 plus 6 would be 42. Okay? You're going to have to do B on your own. Remember, you're changing everything in the days. Remember that in the back of your book, you can look up metric measures and English measures, and they'll help you to know things that you need to know. Like, for example, the problem you'll be doing there, B, how many days are in a year? Okay, uh, seven. It's asking us to write true or false by each. Three feet equals one yard. That's true. B. 1,000 meters equals 1 kilometer, that is true. C, 2 quarts equals 1 gallon, that's false. 4 quarts equals a gallon. D, 10 years equals 1 decade, that's true. E, 
E, 1 meter equals 10 hectometers, that is false. F, 15 ounces equals a pound? No, 16 ounces would, not 15. And 8, it's telling us to write the factors for these numbers. The factoring chart may be used, it says. This is our factoring chart that we had the other day. But I would like you guys to try to do it without looking at this. It says write the factors for these numbers. Uh, let's see, 8a, what numbers are factors of 9? What are the numbers that go into 9? Well, we know 1 and 9 go into it. And what else? 3. So the easy ones are always the 1, and on this one, 1 and 10. Or this one, we're done, 1 and 3. What else goes into 10? Think of two numbers that go into 10. And remember, if it ends in a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, you know that 2 will go into it. And there it ends in a 0. So we know that 2 will go in it. 2 times what would be 10? 2 times 5. Okay, see if you can figure out those last blanks. You'll have to do the rest of the pages on your own. And to help you to be able to do the rest of these, I'm going to tell you to share something with you. Here's a fun fact about the dollar bill. If you took a, a dollar bill and, and you folded it, and you folded it in such a way so that like um, each fold it neatly overlaps the opposite side. So if you like folded it in half perfectly so that the corners touch, and you continue to fold it that way, if you continue to try to fold it, it can only be folded six times. Now seven times if you put it into like a vice, some kind of device where you can squeeze it, but you can only fold a dollar bill if you fold it correctly where the corners all touch and you fold it in half each time you can only do it six times so if you fold a dollar bill and fold it in half and then with that half that you have then you fold that in half and you keep going you can't go more than six times kind of interesting how about this for interesting in 1915 the average family would make six hundred eighty seven dollars in a year. And if you know anything about what your parents make, that is not a lot of money. $687 is not a lot of money. Your parents make more than that in one paycheck. And we're saying this is how much families made in a year in 1915. Mr. Fit, he, he probably makes way less than all of your parents. His first year of teaching, he made less than 14000 a year. Now, teachers, they always say teachers don't get paid a lot. I think because they only work half the year. They get summers off. But 14000 a year, and this is what, pay, what families made a long time ago. And so it's always going up, the value of the dollar. People make more. Your parents probably made more than your grandparents. Your great-grandparents probably made even less. And the value of of the dollar goes up regularly. Kind of interesting in the so in the Solomon Islands. This was a, a while ago. It used to be that dogs' teeth, dogs' teeth, were used as money. So when people traded money or bought something off of somebody, they would use dogs' teeth as their form of money. If you finish early, once you get your math page all done, you'll have to go to the back of the room of the map and see if you can find where the Solomon Islands are on there. Look at this. They would say money doesn't grow on trees. That means don't waste money. You can't just get more of it easily.
But look, this one, it looks like money's growing on trees. Kind of funny. So with all the coins that the United States makes each year, it's the, it's the United States Treasury. They make coins. They make a silver dollar, and there's a 50 cent piece, there's a quarter, a dime, nickel, and a penny. Now, on the regular ones, that the, they have faces on them, and all of the faces, they all look to the left on the coin, except for one. Do you guys know which coin the face doesn't look to the left? Raise your hand if you think it's the quarter. Raise your hand if you think it's a nickel. Raise your hand if you think it's a penny. And raise your hand if you think it's a dime. Okay, the one where the head looks to the right and not the left is the penny. The penny is the one exception to that rule. And here's a quarter. So, interesting fact about the quarter, it has 119 grooves on the circumference. So if you were to count every one of these little grooves on here, see how there's little tiny grooves? I'm not even doing a good job marking them, but if you were to count them all around, there's 119 grooves. And a dime has one less, so a dime has 118. You'll have to check that sometime and see if that's true. Okay, hopefully that helps you to get the rest of this done on your own. And the first coin that was ever minted in the United States, first one ever made, it was a silver dollar. And it was issued on October 15th, 1794.